So I want you to talk a little bit about physics problem solving. In my years of teaching physics, I think this is the one aspect that I find a lot of students struggle with. How do I best describe it? So your textbook has this wonderful section that gives a um, general description on uh, problem solving strategy that you should try to employ in physics. And so, so, you know, I highly recommend this section, you know, read it through it. And, um, and I really do want to emphasize the amount of creativity that goes into uh, solving problems, both the physics and other problems. And this is really the skill that we are trying to teach you in this class. It's the, perhaps the one transferable skill that you learn in a physics class. It's uh, even more important than laws of physics that you might learn. Um, maybe not quite as much this semester because we don't teach you many laws of physics in Physics 4A. Um, so the, this section gives you some general steps, you know, examine the situation to determine which principles are involved and make a list of given, identify what needs to be determined, and determine which physical principles can help you solve the problem. And for some of the situations, for example, force analysis, we'll be giving you very specific steps to follow in order to apply the Newton's laws to a particular dynamics problem that you're trying to solve. But even as we are about to, well, in a couple of weeks, <laughs> about to introduce the more specific steps of physics problem solving, I want to highlight that there is a very general approach to problem solving. And uh, you can kind of see it in this section, when it gets to solution, they actually um, describe it in one paragraph. And it's uh, really because the most difficult part of physics problem solving is um, coming up with the equation to solve for. <laughs> so in the, the first step of the strategy, um, which will end with you writing down uh, most of a system of equations with some number of unknowns that you solve for. That's the step that requires the most uh, creativity, most uh, experience, and <laughs> perhaps most uh, patience to solve through. And once you have a system of equations, the solution step, it's basically math. Uh, I'd like to say then the rest is algebra. Or uh, it, solution steps are often, uh, sometimes solution steps can be difficult, but very often it's easy to automate. So you will see me from time to time using computer algebra system because um, <laughs> computer algebra system like uh, SageMath can solve through those the system of equations much more quickly than I can. Now, what SageMath cannot do is come up with those the system of equations given a physical situation. And I, I would say um, even though um, I would say, so physics class is probably the one class where we place the most emphasis on this approach to problem solving. Uh, this uh, physics 4A class, that's basically the whole class, or maybe three quarters of the class. So even the general physics class like this one is the one class where you will see the most uh, emphasis being placed on developing problem-solving skills. Um, I want to give you some point of comparison so that you can see that we aren't the only ones doing it, that you can see that these are transferable skills. So I was going through a Calculus 1 textbook, for example. Let me bring it up. Um, yeah, so this is Calculus 1 textbook, and I think I remember uh, something about related rates and some of those problems relating to related rates looking more similar to general physics questions. And um, so, you know, this is a, like a chapter and a set of questions in a calculus textbook. And I hope this look kind of familiar. 
And a lot of math questions are basically that math questions. <laughs> they ask you to do some math stuff. And <laughs> um, without saying that those are easy stuff, the kind of questions or problems that I want you to see are quite similar in appearance to physics questions are these. So um, you might remember some of questions like this in your math class. There's a question that describes a situation. You know, a car is being compacted, it's rectangular solid, volume is decreasing uh, at some rate, and I guess that's what related the rates are. So I uh, think back to questions like this. I think these are usually described as word problems. And um, the kind of skills you need in solving these questions, they are quite similar to the skills that you need in solving physics questions. And, um, and yeah, physics problems are basically like a lot of these questions. And, uh, and um, when I was math student, I really enjoyed these word problems because I like talking and I like words. <laughs> Um, but I, I do recognize uh, with all other students, sometimes it's these word problems that you remember having trouble with. And, and maybe this is the most uh, encouraging thing that I can say. As you go into becoming an engineer or a scientist, the number one skill that you will be most valued for is your problem solving skill. That's the one thing that really can't be automated. And it's a skill that you have to learn at some point. And I strongly encourage and recommend that you focus on learning the skill in this semester in Physics 4A. This is the semester to do it. That's really the number one thing that we'll be putting most of our efforts to. And I will be there to help you every step of the way. So that's uh, everything I want to say, um, except to maybe uh, point out one resource. Uh, there's a book called The Portable TA. Let me look it up. It's uh, out of print. Um, I guess this is the library link that I'm using. Uh, we do have it available within the course with the author's permission. And you will see us referring to this book quite a bit. So uh, the reason this is one of the main resources for this class is really with the problem solving, as your textbook says, there is an one set of steps that will work for every problem. It's a more general uh, soft skill that you will have to develop. And one of the best ways to develop skills like that is by looking at lots of examples. And your homework questions will provide some of these examples. And the portable TA is one place where you will see a lot of examples with um, the solutions provided by the author. So that's all. Thank you for listening. And until next time, bye.